Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. In this video, we're going to talk about setting up a simple first operation program using the 98431 component. And there's a handful of ways that we can go about approaching this. And if you've already programmed your second operation, which is everything that you see here on the screen, you can easily go over here to your operations manager and find your machine group. And inside that machine group, once you click on it and select on it, you can right click on it. And you can find this drop down from the menu called groups. And inside that groups, you can either start a new toolpath group and you can name that your first or second operation, depending on which one you're working on. Or if you're going from one machine to another machine where there, you have different uh, tools uh, or a tool library or a different post simulation uh, for each machine, you can set up a new machine group uh, and you can choose like an additional mill or an additional lathe. Um, so really quickly, if you select the new toolpath group here, you'll notice that it's going to uh, dock itself inside the machine group one and it's going to share the same stock setup as well as the same tool library that you used for this toolpath group one. And you can name it whatever you want, but you can click off of it. So if you click on the toolpath group one, it's going to pull everything inside of that folder or that toolpath group one. And then if you click on toolpath group two, it'll pull everything from that toolpath group two. So uh, sometimes people will add too many toolpath groups. Um, when you click on this and right click on it, you'll see that there's not an option to delete it. Uh, just make sure that you have this selected if you do want to delete it. And then once you have that selected and only that selected, you want to click on the delete key on your keyboard. I've seen people sometimes select the toolpath group one and have that also selected and see all of these check marks next to their toolpaths. Uh, and then when you click on the delete key or you right click and click on delete, you'll notice that this will delete everything out of that toolpath group. Uh, and to get that back, um, don't do anything else yet. Just go ahead and right click and go to undelete, and that should bring it back there. Additionally, if you wanted to bring in a new machine, um, you can go ahead and do the click on the machine group one, and you can right click on that, and you can go and select uh, groups, and then we'll, we can add a new machine, a mill lathe. Uh, you can also click on machine here, and then from the mill uh, category, you can select the default mill, and then you can start programming second operation or first operation that way. Just one thing to note is that you'll have to reset up your stock setup as well as your tool library and then pull in, uh, you know, a new model or your wireframe or whatever you need to be using for that. So just a couple ways that you can approach that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up first operation as if you had nothing programmed and we're just starting fresh. So I'm actually going to start a new Mastercam file. So I'll go up here to file and then new. And then I'm not going to save this and I'm just going to open up a blank Mastercam file. So once you have a new Mastercam file started up, I just want to make sure that you're working in the right units of measurement. So in the top left hand corner, we're going to click on file and inside of the file, we're going to find configurations. And then once we're in this configurations window, I just want to make sure that your units of analyzed measurement are set to inches and the current configuration file that we're working in is in inches as well. So if both of these are reading inches, you can go ahead and hit the green check mark and then we can either open or merge in an existing 3D model. So we'll go up here to the top left hand corner again and go to file and inside of file we'll either select open or merge. I'm just going to go ahead and hit open um, because this is going to be a fresh file and I'll show you how I can look for it as if it's not here in my recent documents. So if we click on computer and we go to browse, we'll find the file folder uh, that we have the uh, SOLIDWORKS 98431 component saved to. So I'm going to go to my walkthroughs here, first operation. and by default, you might only see Mastercam files, and if you're only seeing those Mastercam files, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can hit the Mastercam files here, and it can uh, select all files, and that's going to open it up to anything that you have currently saved in that folder. So I can see the icon for SOLIDWORKS as well as my 98431, and then I have a type here, SOLIDWORKS part document. So I'll click on that 98431 component and hit open, and that's going to open up here into that new uh, Mastercam file that we just created. And like we've talked about before, if I right click anywhere here in the viewport or the free space of Mastercam and I go to top, it's not going to move it. It's not going to reorientate it to the top view from SOLIDWORKS. And that's because SOLIDWORKS and Mastercam have two different manufacturers and they have different angles of projection when they uh, set up those softwares. So we have to create a new plane and reorientate it so that we're looking at the top of the part or in this instance, the bottom of the part for the first operation. So we're going to go down here to the bottom left of our operations manager and we can see toolpath, solids, planes, levels, recent functions. We're going to locate that planes tab. 
And inside of planes, we can see here that we have our top, front, back, so on and so forth. And we can see that the nomen or axes are at the top left corner of our part. So we actually want to, and I'm going to move my model a little bit, I actually want to set up my first op top on the back side here so that I can mill the back and then flip it over and then we can continue on with second operation. So the easiest way that we can do this is clicking on the green plus button inside the planes tab. So up here in the top left you'll see that green plus button. Click on that and then we're going to activate the dynamic. So we'll activate the dynamic plane and we'll see that the nomen is attached to our mouse. And we could set this up in a handful of different ways. I can grab one of these corners and then flip around my nomen so that the Z is pointing up. But I want to show you a really quick and easy way to find the center point of a model um, so that we can put the nomen at that location. So if I move my uh, model around, I'm going to click on, sorry, not click on, I'm going to hold my mouse over on the top left-hand corner of this back side. I'm not going to click on anything, so I'm just going to leave my mouse there. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to wake up that point or wake up that corner. And when I move my mouse off of this, you'll see that there's a plus button underneath where I was just holding my mouse. And I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom right-hand side. So I'm going to move down here, and I'm going to put my mouse there. And I'm going to leave it there for just a second, and it's going to try to wake up that corner. And once it looks at both of those corners, it's going to find the center point of both of those points. And you can see that there's a red plus button now located at the center of my model, and I can actually click on this, and when I click on that, it's going to drop my nomen or my axes right there at the center of the piece. Now, my Z is pointing, you know, where Y should be, and I want to rotate this around an axis. So if I look at this, I can rotate this around X so that Z, uh, Z is pointing up. And I'm going to click on one of these red segments here so that it correlates with the red axis. So I'll click on one of these red segments, and I'm going to rotate this inside the wheel or the compass. If you're outside the wheel of the compass, it's just going to go to wherever you click your mouse. However, inside the wheel of the compass, uh, this is going to be in 5 degree increments. And we're going to find 90 degrees. So that Z is pointing up towards us, and that Y is pointing um, towards the top end of the part, and then X is going right. And once I have this established here, I'm going to rename this plane. I'm going to title this First Op Top. And then I can go ahead and hit the green check mark. Now, I'm still not set up in the uh, first off top plane. I'm still technically looking at the working coordinate system for the top plane that was the master one. Um, so if I right click and hit top, it's going to go to that front view again. And what we really want to do is establish this so that our first off top has our working coordinate system. So if you click on the WCS over here in first off top, as well as our C and our T planes. If I want to flip to that view, I can also click on the G view here. Or likewise, if I'm in a different orientation and I right click and I go to top, once I've established the WCS or the working coordinate system for this first op top, this is going to recognize this as the top plane. So now I want to set up some wireframe to be used for the stock setup when I'm going and adding a new machine and creating that mesh file. So just like we were working inside this planes tab in the bottom left hand corner, we're going to use the levels tab right next to it. And inside of levels, we're going to create a new level to put wireframe geometry on. So from the top left hand corner of the levels tab, we're going to click on the plus button here. And it's going to add a new level. And you'll see that there's a check mark next to that level. And there's nothing on that level, no entities, no name. So I'm going to rename this. So I'll click on this box right here, double click on it. I'm going to uh, title this stock wireframe. And once again, you'll see that there are zero entities on it. Um, I can also turn on and off entities from this view. So, for example, if I want to, um, you know, make this invisible, this 3D model that we just pulled in, I can click this X button underneath visible, and I'll turn it on, or sorry, turn it off, and then when I, if I click on it again, it'll turn it back on. I can't do that to the wireframe right now because that's the current active level, and you'll have to change the check mark where it's located, and then you can turn uh, those entities on and off. However, I just want to make sure that you're working on the stock wireframe level, so make sure that there is a check mark next to stock wireframe and, the, and that there's zero entities currently on it. So once we're on that stock wireframe level, we're going to go over here to the top ribbon and we're going to find wireframe. And inside of wireframe, we're going to locate the bounding box option. So we'll click on bounding box here. And you'll notice that this is going to open up a new properties bar and we have the ability to select on uh, 3D geometry. 
So I'm going to select this 3D model that we just imported. It's going to highlight yellow, so we'll know that that's selected when it's highlighted yellow, and we move our mouse off of it. And we can click End Selection. And that's going to recognize that we're trying to create a bonding box or a wireframe geometry that uh, encompasses this entire model here. Uh, really quickly, over here on the left-hand side, just make sure that you're working from the center origin and not like the top face or the bottom face. Uh, so that we're working from the center of this box here. And then we're going to add some uh, material or add some distance here uh, to represent the stock size. So we have an X value of 3.75. We have a Y value of 3 inches. And you'll see that the box is growing in X and Y. And then lastly, this is why it's important to select that uh, center point origin. When I change the Z value, it's going to move uh, symmetrically in the top and the bottom. So I'm going to change this to 1 so that we have one inch from, uh, or sorry, half inch from the, the center of the piece here. So we have 3.75, 3, and then 1. And then we'll go ahead and hit the green check mark, and we can see that our wireframe is right there. And if we look at the levels, the stock wireframe level has 12 entities. Now, again, if I wanted to make this visible or invisible, I would have to go to a different level, and then I would have to click on the X to turn those on or off. So once I have my wireframe set up, I'm going to go ahead and populate a new machine inside of my toolpath group. So go over here to the bottom left-hand corner again, and we're going to find the toolpaths tab. And inside of the toolpaths tab, you'll notice that there's nothing populated here. I'm not able to set up my stock. I'm not able to uh, create toolpath. So what I need to do is on this top ribbon bar, we're going to go ahead and find the machine tab. And in the machine tab, we're going to find the mill option. And we're going to hit the drop down for mill, and we're just going to add a default mill here. So once this uh, creates that default mill, we can see that there's a machine group one, we have some properties, and then the toolpath group one, and that's where we can start programming. So before we start programming, I want to set up my stock material. So you'll have to find this properties uh, folder, and we'll have to expand this out under machine, gra uh, sorry, machine group one. And once we have this expanded out, I can see files, tool settings, and then stock setup. So I just want to double click here on stock setup, and that's going to open up the machine group setup here. And inside a machine group setup, there's a handful of different tabs. You can hover over each one of these icons. You can see a machine. So if you want to change your machine, uh, you can change your master model, stock setup, work holding, tool simulation. We want to be in that stock setup tab. That's where it should put you by default. However, if you're in your different tab here, just make sure that you open up this side here or click on this icon for stock setup. So once you're in the stock setup tab, it's important for us to remember that we set up a new plane for that first op top. So whenever we're creating stock geometry, we'll notice that if we hit on the stock plane transformation, this is actually pulling from the original top plane of the model when we imported it. So we're actually going to have to change this from current. If you hit the drop down menu here, we can change it to first op top. So now it's going to recognize the center point of this model or that new operate or sorry, new plane that we created for that first operation. So we can also pick up uh, existing geometry to use for the stock uh, setup. We can click on the bonding box, and we can go ahead and select this and uh, set this up, you know, um, X, Y, and Z, uh, just like what we did in the wireframe there. However, if I click X out of this, I can actually show the wireframe that we already created. So inside preview settings, I can show stock wireframe entities. So once this is selected, and I go back in here to add from bonding box, um, I can actually do uh, all shown. So if I click on all shown here, it'll actually pick up all the geometry that we had already either imported or created. So that's going to include that wireframe geometry. So we already set this up as 3.75, 3, uh, 3 inch, and then 1 inch. So again, just make sure that you have preview settings in here, show wireframe entities. And then once you have that selected, you can click on add from bounding box. And then instead of manually clicking on these entities, you can actually click on all shown and it'll pick up everything that's currently on the screen. So we can hit the green check mark and then it'll actually create a mesh file for us. Hit the green check mark once again. And just one thing to note, uh, even though that we created that stock model, uh, we don't really see it quite yet. You'll have to go here into the toolpaths tab and inside a toolpaths tab up here in the top ribbon, you'll have to select the uh, stock display option and then you can see the red dotted line there you can also do stock display shading uh, I don't typically use that so I'll turn that off and just leave the stock display so that I can see the red lines there 
So once we have our stock set up, as well as our machine group, we can go ahead and start programming and creating toolpath geometry inside of that machine group. So let's go ahead and find the toolpath tab. We should probably already be in it if we're looking for our stock display. Uh, but we're going to create a face mill that's just going to go across the top of this until we reach the uh, top face of the part. So you can see that there's actually some distance in between the top of the stock and then the top of the model. So we'll go ahead and click on the 2D gallery here. So inside a 2D gallery from the toolpath tab, we can hit the drop down menu. You can find the face mill or you can grab it from that top toolbar there. You can just as easily click on it. It's that fourth icon. So we'll click on the face mill. And this is just going to open up this uh, selection option here. We can either choose from the wireframe or we can choose from the solids. Sometimes it defaults to solids and it'd be a little bit difficult to get the entirety of this uh, stock model from the solid because we actually have some additional material that we have to remove. So I prefer from this uh, first operation uh, viewpoint is to actually use the wireframe and then from wireframe, we're going to use the chain option and we'll select the one of these top edges here and we can either click on the red arrow to continue the selection or I can hit the fast forward here uh, to continue selecting until I get the full top face of that stock model that we just created. So I'll hit the green check mark and then once from here we'll have to go into our tool tab and you will either be able to pull the tools from your existing uh, machine group if you're creating additional toolpath uh, groups here, but in this instance, I'm treating this as if I have no tools or no tool library set up. So I'm going to select my uh, select from the tool library. You can see here that it's actually filtering from the face mill. If it was actually pulling all 446 tools, you'll have to go to filter and then you'll have to hit none. If this is all selected, you'll have to hit none and then you'll have to find the face mill. However, it filtered it out already for me. I'm just going to select this uh, tool number 324, which is my three inch face mill hit the green check mark and inside of my note here I'm just going to title three inch face mill okay and I'm just going to work my way down through each one of these tabs so my cut parameters here we're going to change this not from one way but I'll hit the drop down menu here and I'll make one pass so that we're going to use the entire diameter of the tool to cut across that so we have a three inch stock model and a three inch tool so it should work out just fine uh, we can also go down here to stock to leave on floors we want to leave nothing and then we'll go down here to depth cuts. Uh, this is going to be important because we actually do have some distance in between the, again, top face of the model and then the top face of the stock. So I'll have to turn on my depth cuts because there's a maximum depth cut here using that three inch uh, face mill of 60,000, so 0 0.0625. Um, we can keep the tool down. If this wasn't selected, it would make a pass, then it would go back to its original point, make another pass, and then repeat that. So I'm going to actually uh, select keep tool down. Inside of linking parameters here, uh, we just want to change this all to absolute, 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 and absolute. So top of stock, it's actually recognizing that it's 137 thousandths above the top of the model. So if I click on top of stock, I can verify that by clicking on this corner, and I'll pick up that 137 again. And then depth here, we'll just establish that it's already registering it as zero, so I can click on that point again, so it's still reading as zero. Okay, so we should have everything right there. A uh, good check here is to just jump down here to planes and make sure that we have first stop, first stop, first stop. If you're not seeing first stop there, you can hit the select WCS plane and you can select it from here. And then you can go ahead and copy it over to the T and the C planes. If you wanted to, you can go down here to coolant. You can turn your flood on and you'll hit the green check mark. So once we have all those complete there, we can see that we have a couple passes going from left to right across the part. Um, this is maybe a little bit too much overhang for me uh, approaching. So if I want to, I can actually adjust this and shorten up the uh, passes across. So I can go over here to parameters inside of facing and I can jump over here to my cut parameters and inside of cut parameters, you can see that my approach and exit distance are about 50%. So we're actually allowing for inch and a half to approach the part. So I'm actually gonna shorten that down uh, and change this approach distance to 25% and my exit distance to 25%. When I hit the green check mark, you'll see that these blue lines have shrunk up a little bit and that should be the face mill. And if I wanna see that um, as some kind of simulation here from the uh, operations manager, I can find this icon with these little waves. This is going to be our back plot selected entities. So as long as I have face mill selected here, I'll click on back plot. 
I'll get the uh, simulation here of the tool, and then I can hit the play button up here, and that's going to play that out. It's going to make one pass, an additional pass, and then should be three passes left to right. So I'll speed this up a little bit. So about three passes there, and then that's going to complete. And then we can go ahead and do the next uh, toolpath operation, which is going to be the cleanup of the outside edges here. So once we have our face mill set up, we can go ahead and take a look at using the contour mill to clean up these outside edges to bring the stock model from 3.75 by 3 inches down to the 3.5 by 2.5, which is the uh, true dimension of the part that we're trying to cut. So we're going to make sure that over here in the left-hand side in our operations manager that we see a red arrow beneath the face mill that we just created. And from the 2D gallery up in the top left-hand corner of the toolpaths tab, we're just going to hit the drop down menu here and we're going to find contour or could be the first icon in that uh, milling tab there. So we're going to look for contour, we'll click on that contour here. And we were using the wireframe before because we were able to pick up the wireframe of the stock model. Um, so what we're going to actually use now is we're going to pick up the solids because we actually want to pick up the contour that is existing from the 3D model from the 98431 component. So once you're in this 3D, or sorry, the solids uh, chaining here, you would just want to make sure that we're selecting only the loop and not this face here. Because if we select the face, it's going to try to mill out these uh, center holes uh, from the drills on the second operation. So I'm going to deselect face, and I just want to have loop selected. And from loop, I just want to make sure that I'm uh, selecting the loop that is on the top plane or the theoretical top plane for the first op top. So it's easy to accidentally you know, grab a side here or a face, but we actually want to grab the top loop here. So if I go to the bottom left-hand corner of this face, I select that, that's going to go around clockwise, which is going to be our climb milling. If I did not select this where the arrow is pointing down, I'm going to show you a bad example. If I selected on the top left corner and was facing down, this would be a climb milling operation. So we actually don't want that to happen. So I want this to be a uh, climb here, not a conventional. And I'll hit the green check mark. And then over here in the tool tab, we only picked it, or sorry, we were only using a three inch face mill, so that's our only tool in the tool library currently. So from the select tool library, we're gonna actually uh, choose a flat end mill. Again, if you're seeing all 446 tools here, you can change this filter from all to none. And then you're just going to select this end mill flat one, which is the first icon here in this window. And then from this tool selection here, we're going to find the 5 8 flat end mill. So we can find a diameter here of 0.625, and that should be the 5 8 flat end mill or tool number 292. I'll hit the green check mark. So I'll have that loaded in. And the comment here, I'm just going to type 0.625 end mill contour. Okay. So I've set up my 5 8 flat end mill. I'm going to jump down here to my cut parameters. Inside of cut parameters, this is going to look, like, look a little bit different than what we were seeing with the face mill. We actually have some control over the compensation type. So I can change this from computer or off. Uh, I'm going to leave it at computer. That's fine. We can also go from left to right if we're doing like an internal pocket or an external, po or external island. Um, stock to leave on walls, we're going to leave 0, 0. So we should have compensation computer, compensation direction left and then stock to leave in walls and floors, zero, zero. Depth cuts, we're gonna split this up a little bit and I'm gonna click on this depth cut here and I'm gonna make this max rough step here to 0.25. So I'm gonna do 0.25 and I'll just show you again a bad example of what happens when we don't leave the tool down. So I'll do 0.25, we'll do lead in, lead out. Uh, this should be pretty good. We wanna use lead in, lead out because we don't want to uh, hit directly and then make a, a 90 degree uh, turn there. So we actually want to ease the tool into the contour. So we'll leave the lead in, lead out on. And then inside of linking parameters, uh, we just want to change this all to absolute, 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 and absolute. Now this is where it's going to be important to realize what we've milled away or what we've already done with previous operations here because the top of the stock is still reading 137 thousandths. Now in reality, we took that away with that face mill, but I'll just leave that on for right now. And then the depth, if we click on this, we're not going to the top of the part. We actually want to come down here to this bottom edge, so this bottom corner. 
So we'll click on that depth here and we can see that it's going down a value of negative 425 thousandths. Let's go ahead and round that off and we'll actually make this negative 0.5, okay? So top of stock right there is reading at 137 thousandths. I want this to show you like a bad error here, uh, but in reality, we actually want this to be zero. And we can jump down here to planes. If I wanted to uh, check, we see that we have first off top, first off top, first off top. And once again, we can go down here to coolant and we can change our flood to be on if we so wish. And we'll hit the green check mark and we can see that there's really three passes inside of this operation when we really want this to be two because we saw that uh, we took off that top face there with the uh, face mill and we should go from zero to negative a half inch instead of uh, the value of 137 up here all the way down to negative a half, which is actually in total nearly uh, three quarters of an inch. So we actually want to remove this one pass. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over here to parameters and inside of parameters, you just want to make sure that our linking parameters here top of stock. If we change this from the 137 top of stock to zero, we're actually going to change this and bring this down to three passes. And just make sure, again, um, I'll show you a bad example, but I didn't keep the tool down. So when I hit the green check mark and I do a back plot on this one, we'll see that the tool is going to go around and it's going to retract out and then go around again. So if we want to adjust that, we're going to click on the parameters again and go here into our depth cuts and we're going to change this to keep tool down so that when I hit the green check mark and then I back plot this once again, this will actually go around and then it's just going to go down instead of retracting out. So that's why I wanted to show you two bad examples there of not selecting the keep tool down and then also if you go down in here link parameters, if this wasn't set to zero, if this is actually picking up 137, you'd see three passes. Uh, if you have zero, uh, you'd see two passes. And then we'll hit the green check mark. Okay. So the last thing that I want to check is to make sure that I'm seeing these cuts in a 3D mesh or a 3D model. So we've made both these toolpaths. If I select my toolpath group one, you can see that I have my toolpath geometry for the face mill as well as the toolpath geometry for the contour. And it's all well and good if I try and back plot this and I'll see both these tools simulate out. I can actually fast forward through these. But I, I want to see that geometry uh, removed from the stock model that we had already set up. So I'm going to back out a back plot here. And as long as I have my toolpath group one selected, or if you're doing an additional operation, it might be toolpath group two, you want to see a check mark next to each one of these folders for the facing and then the contour. And then right next to back plot here in the operations manager, we're going to select on the verify selected operations. So we're going to click on this verify selected operations icon, and it's going to open up an additional window for us. And this is going to be the verify window. So I'm going to maximize this out. And we can see here that there's the stock red model that we created in stock setup. And if I click on the play button, we can actually see that material getting removed. However, everything here is in yellow. If I wanted to see the face mill and the end mill that we used for that contour as two different colors, because I can see that there's a section here and a section here, I'd have to go up here in this top uh, left-hand corner. And inside of this ribbon, I'm gonna find verify and inside of Verify, I'm going to click on Color Loop. And you'll see that we'll actually see a color for the face mill and a color for the uh, contour. So I'll rewind that and get it back here to this uh, stock model, nothing cut yet. And then I'll slow this down and then I'll hit play. You can see that we're making those face mills from left to right. And then we're going to pull out that uh, 5 8 end mill. And then we're going to go ahead and lead that in as well as contour that around. And that's going to be the first pass, and then we'll make an additional pass. So again, if you're seeing three passes, it's because you didn't have your um, uh, top of the model there set up uh, in the linking parameters, and you'll have to change that to zero. And then the depth is going to be uh, negative a half inch. So that looks all good to me, the first operation. I wouldn't actually go and drill these because I would try to drill them from second operation, so I would leave these two drills alone. Now, the only other thing that I would include in this, and you can leave it at this point if you so wanted to, but I could add an edge break to the uh, top edge of that uh, contour there. It'd be pretty easy to do. So from the 2D gallery, um, we can go over here to the top left. We can hit the drop down menu. And inside this menu, we can find model chamfer. So it's going to be on this third row. It's going to be the third one over. So we'll click on model chamfer. 
and it's just going to open up this model chamfer window here. Uh, previously, we would be prompted by a selection uh, manager uh, first before getting into this window. However, from model chamfer, we're going to select the chain geometry from the first tab here. So we'll click on chain geometry. And it's going to open up, again, this chaining uh, window that we're more familiar with. And we can treat this the same way that we treated the contour. So we can leave it at loop. And then we just want this to be a climb mill here. So we just want to select the bottom left of this top face so that the arrow is going around clockwise. We'll hit the green check mark. And then we're just going to jump down here to tool. And we're not going to be able to use the 5 8 flat end mill or the 3 inch base mill. So from the tool library here, we can go ahead and find, it's already filtering it out for me, uh, the chamfer mills. Um, we can go and find the filter too. Again, if we hit all, none, we can go ahead and find the chamfer mill. It's the one in the top row furthest to the right. Click on the green check mark here. And we'll just use a standard half inch uh, chamfer mill green check mark. And then we'll just do chamfer edges. Then we'll jump down here to cut parameters. Inside of cut parameters, we have the ability to turn compensation on or off. We're actually going to leave compensation on in this instance and the compensation left as well. Um, bottom offset, I usually leave this at zero. And then the chamfer width, I actually change this to 0 0.015. So 15 thousandths, if you want to go to the full fractional value, it's 0 0.015625. Stock to leave on walls, zero and zero. Depth cuts, we're not going to worry about. Lead and lead out, we do want this on. Uh, linking parameter, we really don't have to change anything here. Planes, first stop, first stop, first stop. And then coolant, we can turn our flood on if we wanted to. We can hit the green check mark. We can see that it was a simple uh, edge break there around that top edge. So if I wanted to, I can go and select my toolpath group once again. And then once all of these are selected, I can select on my verify icon inside my operations manager. It's gonna open up our window again here. And if I hit play, we can see that we're gonna have that face mill that's gonna come across. And now we have three colors, so that's yellow. The blue is gonna be this contour from the 5 8 end mill. And then the pink is just going to be this uh, edge break with that chamfer mill as it's coming across uh, that top edge. So that no one cuts their hand after the part is broken, or sorry, the part is cut, um, because these corners are gonna be extremely sharp uh, after it's machined. You're almost creating a knife edge with that 90 degree corner there. So we're just soft softening up those edges so that uh, no one gets hurt when they're flipping it from first operation to second operation. Um, you could also take a file or a deburring tool and then you could deburr this by hand if you wanted to as well. So that should be all the operations that you'll need for the first operation toolpath here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'll go to file, save as, and I'll just name it 98431 first op and then put your last name. Um, but that should complete first operation here. And I hope that you enjoyed watching this. I appreciate you sticking through this whole one. Uh, we'll go ahead and catch you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.